It is exciting to me. I mean, it is legitimately exciting to me that we sit here in 2021 and you've got a second, at least somewhat viable, national wrestling company. They're not massively huge. They're not truly on the scale of WWE, but I give AEW this. Is they're not small potatoes. They're not a joke. They're not playing for peanuts here. If you could be in a space where you're generating a million plus viewers on a Wednesday night, two hours prime time, like you're at least somewhat major league and especially in today's wrestling business, that makes you pretty damn major league. Clearly, not in WWE's category from just a size and a scope and a profit standpoint, et cetera. Like, there's no reason to debate that. But in and of themselves, on their own, the AEW thing has worked so far. We're a year and a half in, a little bit more now actually, and it's been a success. Would I like to see it be an even bigger success? Absolutely. Why be satisfied? You should always be wanting to look to grow and improve and get better. If you're not learning and growing, you are dying. If you don't go out there and try to better yourself each and every single day, then somebody else is going to come along and they're going to do it and they're going to solve for the problems that you haven't addressed and they're going to take your spot. They're going to take your market share. That's the reality. So it's exciting, but it's not one of those things where you just rest on the laurels and say, hey, you know, this is good enough. It's good for everybody. It's good for fans. It's good for the wrestlers. It's frankly good for both of the companies. Even if you say, well, you have some competition that leads to higher production cost and higher overall salaries and et cetera, that could still be a good thing too because if people have even more skin in the game, they're going to be likely to produce even more for you. Like you invest more, you have the potential to get more and a lot more at that. But sometimes what frustrates me a little bit with AEW is some of the small potatoes thinking and some of the kind of small potatoes things that they have happen. Like if you look back at the last pay-per-view, the whole sparklers finish. Like, thank God it was on pay-per-view, so only maybe 100,000 fans or so saw it live as opposed to a million watching it on TNT on Wednesday nights. And you're going to have those mistakes. Like, those things are going to happen. Just like bad matches and bad shows are going to happen. That's okay. Like, it is okay to make mistakes because it's from your mistakes that you get the greatest opportunity to learn, grow, and improve, and get better. If you never make a mistake, then you're never learning or growing or improving and getting better. Show me somebody that never makes a mistake, and I'll show you a failure. Show me somebody sometimes that makes a lot of mistakes, and you could be talking about some of the most successful people in the world. But I think we're at a point now where we can't just excuse some of these big misses on the details for AEW. For crying out effing loud, you've been doing this for over a year and a half now. Understand, you're still learning, you're being experimental, you may be trying different things, etc. But that ending to Blood and Guts was horseshit last night. It sucked. It absolutely sucked. It didn't suck because Chris Jericho didn't fall 20 feet from the fucking top of the cage into some damn concrete. That has nothing to do with it. Anybody that tries to make that dumbass Mart argument knows they're full of shit and you shouldn't be suckered in by it. That is not the concern. That is not the problem here. Because we already fundamentally know, like, let, let's be legit here. Like, whether you want to call it fake, scripted, predetermined, it doesn't matter. We all know what the fucking game is, the hustle is for professional wrestling. And if calling it fake offends any of you, or specifically wrestlers, like, get the fuck over it. It is what it is. Most things are fugazi, fucking fake in this world. Why should pro wrestling be any different? And I would say, if anything, there are certainly more realistic elements in professional wrestling than a lot of the garbage-ass reality television and, frankly, some of the legitimate sports that you see out there. But what happened last night, those are big mistakes. 
Even if you say, well, it was, on a, it was one part and it was a small detail, like, you can only make but so many of those mistakes before you really generate concerning trends and problems for you long term and people stop taking you so seriously. Like here you've got the inner circle and the pinnacle. You've got this blood feud that's going to blow off in this big ass war game style blood and guts match and you get down to the fucking finish of it all and you've got MJF shoving Jericho off of the top of the cage. A sensible spot to me, sure, why not? Where he lands on what you know what it's going to be. But he lands on it. And what's so bad about it is not the fact that they had it set up as a cushion thing, that they had painted over the cardboard or whatever the hell and the mattresses, etc. It's the fact that somebody in their Kevin Bugs Dunny fucking mind thought it was a wise idea to show this and show how fucking fake this fucking looked. Who made that call? Why would you draw attention to that? Why would you emphasize that? Why wouldn't you look at this beforehand? Why wouldn't you potentially practice this beforehand? Why wouldn't you make sure, especially off of Sparkler Gate a month ago, that you didn't have this shit all lined up and looking good and feeling good and everybody was in their spots and knew exactly what to go to and what camera shot you were going to and what you were going to emphasize? Like, you could have done this in a way that didn't look so damn stupid. Period. Like, this looked like the type of shit I would have expected to see out of a Vince Russo TNA. Like, you want to talk about those things that go beyond making you look fake, that just make you look stupid and pointless. It's shit like this. You can't feature how soft and padded the landing area was, taking away all of the consequence from the fucking blood feud between the two factions, in particular MJF and Chris Jericho, and expect that to be a good thing. And then wasn't it Jericho smiling at one point like, it's one thing to set up this abortion of a gimmick. It's another thing to sit there and sell it like a fucking jackass. Like you're smiling and laughing about it. Like, that's not how you should be doing it. That's not how you should be doing any of this. This to me is the perfect example of if you're going to go for holy shit, if you were going to go for big and spectacular, then damn it all, you better do everything that you can to position yourself and frankly protect yourself sometimes from yourself to make sure that you are actually accomplishing what you set out to do. Because instead what you looked at here was even if people talked about they liked the match or loved the match, or they were initially focusing on, I hate the stupid picture-in-picture. Picture. Stop sitting there and going to all these damn picture-in-picture picture spots during this big blood feud fucking match, which is an unfortunate, necessary reality of being wrestling on television. But I get what the fans are saying because, yes, it's distracting. And you're saying, hey, this is important, but not as important as paying the bills of the fucking advertisers. But it was the finish. It's like so many other good things. It doesn't matter at the four place feeling good if you don't nut when all said and done. Some of you might say, what's four play? To which I would say, doesn't even fucking matter anymore. <laughs> but you sit there, you play in this big spot and you make it look like shit. And not only that, you draw attention to it and emphasize it. Again, I want to emphasize, it is okay to make mistakes. What is not okay is to make the same type of sloppy ass mistakes over and over and over again and not expect it to have some potential damage for you, your brand, your product, your wrestlers, etc. Because if I'm a fan, part of the purpose of wrestling is to suspend disbelief, to be able to escape from your mundane, horrendous realities, is to remove yourself and be caught up in what's going on. How do you fucking defend that? How do you get caught up in that? How do you buy into or believe that? If anything, it feels like a WWE type of situation where it's like it was all of this and nothing. It was gi one gigantic waste of everybody's fucking time. 
So you took this show that still did decent viewership this week. It, it, it was over a million viewers, so it was an uptick from previous week. Did well on the demos and blah, 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 whatever. But how could you fuck up so bad? Like, don't you plan this stuff, Tony Khan? Jericho, everybody? Like, don't you think about this stuff beforehand? Don't you have this orchestrated and planned out ahead of time, mapped out ahead of time and say, when this happens, we do this. When that happens, we do that. When this, then that happens, we do this, then that. Like, that looked Bush League last night. Botches and matches happen, and sometimes they have redeeming fun qualities. Sometimes botches in the production value can also have funny, redeeming qualities. But what happened last night sucked all the life out of that main event, sucked a lot of life out of the show in general because that's the last impression everybody got. It looked Bush League. And you're playing in the majors now, AEW. You got to cut out some of these fucking Bush League-ass mistakes, period.